The one thing you don't ever want to do, ask the tech guy about keyboards next. Ask the Tech Guy is brought to you from LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? Well, LastPass can ensure they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether employees are working in the office or remotely. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Ask the Tech Guy is brought to you by LastPass. Visit lastpass.com slash twit. Happy Monday, everybody. Leo Laporte here. Time for Ask the Tech Guy. The cop king in our chat room asked me the other day, what keyboard do you recommend? Well, I've got a recommendation for you. Don't ever ask a keyboard fanatic what keyboard he recommends unless you've got a few hours for the discourse that's going to follow. Keyboards are a fascinating subject, and there certainly are things to think about before you buy any keyboard. Most people just use the keyboard that came with your computer. This is the keyboard that came with my Mac Pro. This is kind of an Apple classic keyboard. Uh, not a lot of travel. Very quiet switches. In fact, if you listen, you can hear me typing, but it is, uh, it is not a loud keyboard by any means. It's backlit. This is actually a pretty good keyboard. This is wireless, and it's a decent keyboard. Uh, it's certainly better than the Apple Butterfly keyboard, which they've shipped on a number of their more recent laptop computers. Those have even less travel. Travel is the movement that the keyboard goes through. The uh, Butterfly keyboard is less than a millimeter. It's a very short travel that keeps it thin. But I don't like the feel of it. I like a little bit more motion. <clears throat> I also like a little bit of clicking. So all keyboards are the same. There's switches, a bunch of switches. <laughs> switches for every letter, every symbol, every character in the alphabet. Uh, they, don't, they all do the same function. When you press the key, the switch connects, makes a contact. The keyboard sends a signal to the computer. Each switch sends a different signal. The computer knows which key you've hit and types it on the screen. But it's, that's really reductionistic. There's a lot more to it. This keyboard is perhaps the most famous keyboard of all. This is the class, classic IBM keyboard. Uh, and this is a kind of a more modern one. The original IBM keyboard was distinctive because the function keys were all on the side. This one has the function keys on the top. But the thing that made the IBM keyboard world famous was its switches. Big, loud, heavy. They called them buckling key switches. Actually, a spring that buckles when you press the switch and makes not only an audible click, but kind of a, you can hear a little musical ting. These are so distinctive. In fact, if you've ever been to the airport and bothered the, the agent at the, <laughs> at the kiosk for a ticket change, you know this sound, right? Nice. These are nice, solid keyboards. And besides just liking the feel of it, and, and by the way, I spent more than 100 bucks. This is a Model M uh, online from a keyboard enthusiast site just to get this keyboard. It's a marvelous uh, old keyboard and really a pleasure to type on. Uh, a couple of things that make these keyboards special. First of all, a lot of travel. These keys move several millimeters every time you push them. But also that feel, which is created by the the buckling spring. It's unique. Nobody uses buckling springs anymore, but uh, that was the feel and the style of the original uh, IBM keyboards. And for many people, this is kind of the, the gold standard. Ergonomically, it probably is better to have your hand move more typing keys rather than less. Smaller movements, repetitive smaller movements, I think eventually can cause more uh, carpal tunnel syndrome, more more repetitive stress injuries. I like a little bit more movement. And if you can even move your hand a little bit as you're typing, I think that's better. But that's a personal decision. I'm going to show you some more modern keyboards. So that's kind of the range from the buckling spring of the IBM to the soft dome, plastic dome keyboard 
uh, that most modern computers come with, including this one from Apple. If you do a lot of typing, you're probably going to want to do a little research and find a keyboard that suits your style and your feel. If you're in an office with a lot of people, you may not want a big, loud, clackety keyboard. Certainly when I'm on the air, the last thing I want is a big, loud, clackety keyboard. In fact, this is the keyboard I use on the air. It looks a lot like the Apple, but it's from one of our sponsors, Matthias, which makes keyboards. Uh, they're, they're keyboard fanatics times 10. Uh, but this is a nice keyboard with a nice swift, soft dome, so it doesn't make a lot of noise. That's good for one on the air. I don't want you to know I'm searching for the answer to your question on Google. Uh, it, it has enough travel and a soft enough landing. You know, the, the landing is important, too. One of the reasons people don't like, including me, don't like the butterfly keyboard from Apple is it almost feels like you're stubbing your fingers. It has such a harsh landing. They've actually fixed that in later versions of the Butterfly. Butterfly 2 actually has some soft plastic at the bottom, so it is a little bit more cushioned when it lands. Um, this is a good keyboard, very usable keyboard, but if I weren't on the radio, I'd want something that's a little bit louder. And now there are two companies that make keyboard switches that are popular these days. There's the Alps keyboard switches. This is another Matthias, an ergonomic keyboard that comes with Alps switches. And these are probably the closest to the old buckling spring keys. They're a little softer in feel, not quite so clacky, but this feels pretty good. And this is ergonomic because it's split. You can arrange it so that your wrists are not at a tilted angle. They're straight on from your arm, and that's considered to be more ergonomic, better for carpal tunnel. This is a nice keyboard, and if you like a lot of travel, big keycaps, uh, and, a, and a somewhat of a clicky feel, I think this is very nice. That's Those are the Alps switches, but by far the best-known name now in keyboard switches comes from a German company uh, called Cherry. And you'll hear about Cherry MX switches in a lot of keyboards. They have a great many of them. They all have different names to designate how they work. There's tactile, in other words, a good feel, but they're not clicky. Cherry brown, clear, and tactile gray. There's tactile and they're clicky, which means they are noisy. That's uh, the clicky ones are the blue, white, and green. You can even... In, uh, my old friend uh, Alex Gumpel used to have, you can go on Amazon and buy keyboard testers that will have all the cherry switches. There's also red, silent, red, speed, silver, nature, white, black, silent, back, and linear gray. <laughs> you, can, you can get a, a, a keypad that has different switches for each key to just to get a feel for it, and that'll help you. Um, I have used a number of keyboards that feature cherry keys. This is a very, I think, a very nice keyboard. That uh, was recommended uh, to me by um, uh, my friend um, uh, Andy Anako. This is called Das Keyboard. And the main reason uh, Andy likes it and I like it too is it has some nice controls. This has, you know, there's some other features you can get on a keyboard like a, a volume switch and special dedicated buttons for music. But this also has nice cherry keys. I'm not sure I remember which ones, but. <coughs> You can tell they're clicky. I'm going to guess these are probably cherry greens, maybe cherry whites, but they feel very nice. Now, I'll show you really, these are, this is probably my favorite uh, keyboard. This, these are keyboards designed for coders. It's called the Code Keyboard from a company called WASM. You can go to codekeyboards.com. I'm sorry, WASD, right? WASD. <laughs> which is the uh, keys used to move your mount, your uh, your character around in Doom. The WSD keyboards um, feature cherry switches, but these code keyboards are completely customizable. And in fact, I have two of them, one for use on the air and one for use off the air. See if you can tell the difference. This is one of them. And this is the other one. You hear that click? Yeah. These are the clicky cherry keys. These are cherry greens. And I think these are actually my favorite. If you don't mind sound, if you want the best feel, the one most like the original IBM. <coughs> they have actually a little bit of a tighter sound. The IBM, let's put the mic next to both of them. You can 
you can hear it. Let's see here if we can do this. This is the IBM. It feels somehow a little more rattly, a little looser. This is the uh, cherry uh, green. Let's put it up here. <laughs> this is the cherry uh, green. I love that click. <gasps> Just love that click. So the reason I have two code keyboards, well, can you guess? It's pretty obvious. This is the one for the on-air use. It's got a great feel, a lot of travel, but not clicky. But when I go home, and it doesn't matter if I make a lot of noise, this is the keyboard I do almost all my keying on. This is a great keyboard, my current favorite, the code keyboard from codekeyboards.com. These are not cheap. These cherry switches are not cheap, but boy, I love the cherry, the cherry green switches and the clickety. Doesn't that sound good? So, <laughs> Cop King, to answer your question, it depends. Do you need it to be quiet? Do you mind that it doesn't have a lot of travel? Do you want a nice soft landing? Then maybe something like the Apple keyboard, the original, the one that comes with their iMacs or the Matthias keyboards, because they're very much like the Apple keyboards, but they have a broader variety of features. For instance, this one has colored backlights and so forth. Uh, those feel good. They're easy to type on. They're light travel. They're the keyboard most of you are using on uh, any modern computer. You can go spend hundreds of dollars and get a really clicky, buckling key keyboard, the old IBM style. My favorite, though, I have to say, is this code keyboard with a nice click, a nice feel. And you know, maybe it's just psychological, but I feel like I'm more accurate on a keyboard that has more travel and has a louder feel. Just I just feel like I know that I've hit that key when I hear that click. There's lots of other things you could consider. For instance, do you want, do you want a 10 key or a 10 key list? The 10 key my wife likes because she's always uh, using Excel and doing a lot of numbers. She's uh, our uh, CEO. Um, I'm just a writer. I don't do a lot of numbers. I don't need the big 10-key keyboard, so I do 10 keyless. Do you want backlight? I think backlight's nice if you type in the dark. If you're never in the dark, you don't need backlight. Uh, how far apart the keys are, the key pitch, that's also relevant to your accuracy. Uh, generally, that doesn't come up unless you're on a laptop where space is an issue. Uh, on any standalone keyboard like all of these, it, the, the pitch is sufficient for uh, most uses. And the other thing people often talk about is the arrangement of the arrow keys. You want what's called the inverted T, which means you've got left, down, and right on one row and the row above up. It's an upside down T. I think all of the keyboards I'm looking at, including the ancient IBM, have the inverted T for arrow keys. You want a big shift key. Some keyboards stint on the size of the right shift. They make it really small. You want a very clear and large return key. Let's not make a small return key. You're hitting that all the time, right? Uh, and I also personally prefer to have dedicated page up, page down, home, and end keys. I use those to navigate through pages. This code keyboard does have that. Uh, I think this is a perfect layout. Um, and of course, it, it goes without saying. Any keyboard that doesn't have an escape key, well, you're just not going to want that. How would you use Emacs and Vim, right? <laughs> this is a beautiful keyboard, one I use every single day at home. I just love it. So there is the answer to your question. Get the code keyboard if you want the keyboard Leo uses. Uh, and if you really want a nice keyboard, get it with the Cherry MX green switches. Those are really nice. Uh, or if you've got a couple of hundred bucks to burn, you can search online for eBay or other places for keyboard enthusiasts who recondition these classic IBM keyboards. They're just great. Uh, everybody's got their own uh, particular flavor. It's just nice to know what's out there and to know what the choices are. And maybe you should get one of those cherry uh, testers that has all the keys on it so you can see what the f keys feel like. It's kind of hard to describe. It's a lot easier. Uh, if you can try it yourself. Uh, our show today brought to you, as always, by our friends at LastPass. LastPass can help you manage identity and promote good security behaviors 
especially now while your employees are remote, that's especially important. You want your employees to have secure password storage, of course. LastPass gives them their own vault for storing every app and web login they use. So they'll always have their passwords with them and can gain access from anywhere, from any device. Working remotely should add convenience, not frustration. Rest easy knowing that your business is secure with LastPass. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to find out how they can help you. That's lastpass.com slash twit. And that's Ask the Tech Guy for this week. I, uh, I'm sure you might have some things to say about your favorite keyboards. You can write to me and ask questions, too, at Ask the Tech Guy at twit.tv. I'm Leo Laporte. I'll see you next Monday. Have a great week. Bye-bye. Stumped on a nasty tech conundrum? Email Ask the Tech Guy at twit.tv.